Secret Agent K7 returns. America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent, who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you a story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, in my past stories, I have shown you how spies and international crooks operate, how they spread propaganda, undermine a people's faith in their leaders, intimidate, and sabotage. Now I am going to show you how all these activities might be fitted together like a jigsaw puzzle and result in revolution and the loss of freedom. My friend John Holbrook will introduce the story. Thank you, K-7. Our story is the built-up case of what could happen if spies and international crooks successfully carried out their assignments. To tell it, we take you to the home of an old statesman. He sits in his library talking of days of crises. With him is his old friend, K-7. Old statesman, you have served your country for many years. You have been through many crises. What do you consider the greatest danger to a people's liberty? Spies and sympathizers who bore from within, K-7. I think I'll tell you a story. It will illustrate my meaning. Suppose we consider the fictitious country of Latvania... Latvania is rich in natural resources, coal, lumber, oil. It also possesses thousands of acres of rich farmlands. And all of these riches are coveted by a powerful and aggressive nation. Go ahead, old statesman. There have been situations like that all through history, K-7. But let me go on. Let us assume that my country is vitally interested. Because I want accurate information, I have dispatched three of your old friends, Agent M, Agent Z, and Agent B9 to Latvania. The crisis there has reached its climax. Our cabinet is in session, and so also are the cabinets of many other nations. As we consider our action, a messenger hurries to my side. While we are awaiting information, I suggest we consider our course of action. Beg pardon, sir. The first report from Latavania is coming in. Uh, thank you. I'll come right in. Gentlemen, I have just learned that the first of the reports for which we are waiting is ready. We will adjourn for one hour. I'll lead the way, Bing. This door, sir. Secret Agent M is waiting to talk to you by shortwave radio telephone. If you will just sit here. Thank you. Go ahead. Hello? Secret Agent M? I am ready. This is Secret Agent M speaking from the capital of Latavania. I've been here two weeks. My assignment was to cover propaganda. The situation here is grave. All newspapers have been subsidized. Last night I talked with the publisher of the paper that has always spoken for the government. He told me of a visitor whom he received yesterday. Who are you? What do you mean by walking in here? My name is Cole, Monsieur Edmonds. I have come to talk with you. You are the head of this newspaper? Yes, of course I am. I have come to tell you that you are not satisfied with the way it is being run. Uh, what do you mean by that? Your stories. They do not reflect what your people think. My newspaper prints the truth. That is a matter of opinion, is it not? 
Here. I have brought you a story. Look at it. Read it. It is for your front page. Government on verge of collapse. Army has deserted. These are lies. They will never appear in this newspaper. Then your newspaper will never be printed again. It will be destroyed. Don't try to open the drawer if you're dead. I'll see that you're turned over to the police. Call the police if you wish. I talked to your chief of police this morning. He now agrees with us. You have but two alternatives, Mr. Edmonds. Resist and be destroyed, print what we dictate, and prosper. You wouldn't dare destroy this plant. Your people will destroy your plant for me. Here, come to this window. Look below. Hey, crowd. There are hundreds. What are they waiting for? For news, Edmonds. For the news I have just given you to print. Here, allow me to raise the window. Well, you see the planes above? They have dropped pamphlets which have told the things you refuse to print. Now the people want the news from you. I'll tell them the truth. Fellow citizens, do not believe what is printed in the pamphlets. Are you satisfied? We will put the window down. This is impossible. They do not believe. Your people will no longer tolerate a government that taxes them but does not give them leaders. Now, Edmunds, I will send these stories to the composing room and have them set up in type. They are to be printed at once. <laughs> Within an hour, the newspapers were on the streets. As night fell, the people stood in silent groups and read each new edition as it came off the press. Hey, look. It says the army has deserted. Oh, well, what does it mean, monsieur? My son. My son's a soldier. Well, uh, he was. Did that end your first report, old statesman? Yes, K-7. The second came in before I had the opportunity of again addressing the ministers. This is Secret Agency speaking. I have just come from the capital where an attempt has been made on the life of Latvania's president. Events are taking place in such rapid succession it is impossible to keep up with them. The president told me the attempt on his life followed a call which he received from a man who refused to give his name. Mr. President... I demand that you resign before tonight. It is the only way you can save your life. I refuse, monsieur. My people have elected me to lead them. As long as my government lives, I will continue to fight for peace. You have the resignation of four of your ministers on your desk before you. I refuse to discuss my government's business with you. Now, if you will leave. Very well. You have had your chance. Tomorrow it will be too late. Goodbye, Mr. President. Thunder. You have seen him? Yes, refused. I go back to the city. As soon as my car is away, follow your orders. All guards have been bribed. The window above is open. I know what to do. When you are finished, go back to the headquarters. I leave you now.
That... That was my second report, K-7. After hearing it, I was prepared for the third. It came late that night. This is Special Agent B-9, speaking from the capital of Latavania. I've just come from the public square. Thousands of citizens assembled there early this evening, following an announcement in the newspapers of the citizens' patriotic meeting. I arrived shortly after the speaker took the stand. Within a minute after he started, I knew what to expect. Citizens of Latvania, your lot has been a poor one. Your factories have either been silent or your workers have been paid such poor wages that your children have starved. Liberation is at hand. This afternoon, the last of your cabinet resigned for the good of your country. Three of these patriotic citizens are here on this platform now. I ask them to stand and receive your applause. Thousands of you have been without work, without food, without warm clothing for yourself or for those you love. It is time all this ends. It is time for a new government to come in and free you and give you the protection to which you are entitled. I am here to offer you this protection, to offer you prosperity, happiness, a new way of living. Your new protectors are now marching into the square. They are your friends here to help you. Your new leader will be here within an hour. Hail the conqueror! What? What does it mean? Look! Look at their uniforms! Oh. They are not our soldiers! Oh. It, it means the end of our nation! <laughs> Thank you for your story, old statesman. Ladies and gentlemen, Latavania was dead. Our story about this mythical nation of Latavania shows what might happen if spies were allowed to spread propaganda, if sabotage went unchecked, if a people lost faith in their leaders. Spies are at work today. Their activities must be watched. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking. Thank you.